so we should not have any more problems. And uh, it looks like we have one player out for Kent. So you didn't miss much there during that uh, brief intermission. I really don't because this would make, if Kent won, they would be two and one on the day? No, one and two, one and two. okay. Which a lot, of people, a lot of people predicted Kent to go 0 and three today. There was a lot of people who put out their little articles that Kent was gonna go 0 and three today. Well, it looks like this game they have a chance to end up one and two. And I think that would make Maryland if they lost 0 and three. I think, I don't know. Uh, can you check, Ryan, and see who they played previously, and we can try to verify that? Because Maryland came in as a four seed, to answer your question, Alex. So if they were to lose all three games, that would drop them probably down into about the 8, 9, or 10 range, I would think. So we'll find out here kind of uh, how this will affect the, the standings for tomorrow. 13 minutes left in the first half. can't verify. I know Maryland lost to Ohio State, and CMU played Maryland, so I'm assuming Central Michigan beat Maryland, because I did not hear any huge uproar of an upset that happened. So we're coming in assuming that uh, both these teams are 0-2 right now, so one of them is going to leave 0-3, and I'd say that would drop them pretty far in the uh, rankings for Sunday. So this game... While it seems like both teams might be a little worn out, is actually really crucial for that seeding for tomorrow, especially for Maryland. Because if they come in as a four seed and go 0 and 3, a that's not a good look as a four seed, and b that really hurts your chances uh, come Sunday. Yeah, it does. Um, but to me, that kind of comes in the question of the ranking system that we have. Is Maryland a true four seed? No offense to them, but I think the ranking system helped them out to be a number four seed coming into Nationals. Yeah, that imperfect ranking system that just continues. We, we think we've got it figured out and then something like that happens. It just, for years coming into Nationals, your top four teams typically never lost a game on day one of Nationals. Of course, upsets happen all the time. Just history has shown us if you're a top four team, you're supposed to go 3-0. and And that also uh, plays into what kind of matchups that we have and how the matchups are determined this year. For those who aren't aware, the matchups were determined one of three ways. By request, so teams that requested each other, those were grant I think those requests were 100% granted. Uh, as well as teams that had not played each other during the season, which is always something I've been a fan of on day one of Nationals, trying to get at least one team that you have not played before that season. And then also finding even evenly ranked opponents according to the rankings. So Maryland has had a really tough draw. I mean, Ohio State, yeah. Ken played three of the top five teams. Started out with... Um, Central, Michigan State, and Maryland, they're all ranked in the top five. Yeah, I think, I think Kent definitely ended up with the, uh, the toughest day one schedule. Yes, somehow we requested to play Central and Michigan State. I, don't, I heard some stories of how that broke down, but so part of that might have been our own fault, but it happened. But I, I would think the board would want to step in at that point and be like, well, that's not fair, and that just doesn't make sense. But... It was a request that we made, so they granted it. I think that was their thing. It's like they always get so much flack for all the games that they schedule. People always want to gripe about the pools that they're in or the matchups they have. So they thought, okay, if people request it, they can't complain when we actually give it to them. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it just seems funny. You play three of the top five teams on day one of Nationals, and that's never been done before. That's never happened. But we requested two of those games, and we got our wish. I think in talking to Felix, he said that he ran all these mathematical formulas like standard deviation and looking at, you know, uh, rankings of uh, who each team was playing 
strength of schedule, stuff like that. And they said Kent was really the only outlier, but a big part of that was because of the teams they requested. So uh, if Kent could come away from this day with one win, you know, you'd like to have more, obviously, as a, a team who's driven all this way to play at Nationals. But considering the schedule they had, I think one win would be a, a nice way to end the day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, you come into day one of Nationals and you expect – to play one of the Michigan teams and just Michigan teams have not lost anything over the years they're always a hard team so you expect to play one of the Michigan teams and then when you play another one with that their talent level is right up there with them that makes it tough for a day one of nationals yeah and, and Maryland for whatever people want to say about questioning their status as a number four seed they are by no means a pushover team so that's not exactly like you're getting a break after playing two Michigan teams. They are not. They are very, they're very smart, and I'm very impressed with how they played against Ohio State. I did not see them play Central. A few balls here and there for Maryland, and they would I think they would have upset Ohio State. Speaking of which, Ohio State just took JMU to overtime. Seemed like uh, Ohio State might have had their chance there at the end of regulation to win that game. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with JMU's six best players is, is a hard proposition for any team. Yeah, it is. But that was mighty impressive. And I think it goes to show you flaws in JMU or maybe how wide open this field actually is because JMU beat Saginaw 2-1, and then I don't think people really had Ohio State on Saginaw's level. And Ohio State here comes and takes them to overtime. And a nice kill there takes out number 52 for Maryland. So the Terrapins whittled down to two players left. Looks like Kent is going to take this point with about between six or seven minutes left if they can wrap this up here. No, I'm sorry, that three. 21 just poked out from the from the corner over here, so three Terrapins left in the game. And a catch right there takes out number 42. 21, uh, Mullen going for a catch there for UMD, knocks him out. So it's down to 25 for UMD. Let's see how long he can hold out. Block there on the ball. And this is uh, number 25, Zwick. Resetting the shot clock just barely. And a timeout called by Zwick. Just trying to get, catch him, get a breather. Ben Subject was talking earlier. Being that last man in is just absolutely exhausting. Ryan, have you been in that situation before where you're the last guy in on a point? I have. It is very tiring, but it's also really fun. <laughs> Especially when a ball's over happen. You're just you're trying to either catch one of them or just dodge all ten balls at once. Have you been in a situation where you've dodged all ten balls at once? I have. I have, and I loved it. It's just so fun. It's just like, come on, that's the best you got? Like, I expected you to hit me. <laughs> Did you have your shirt off when you dodged all ten balls? Your magical powers emanating, therefore. No, I think I would have got thrown out of a few tournaments if I had my shirt off. What a shame, what a shame. Only in kickball do you get to have that advantage, I guess. So we'll see how long number 25 Zwick can last here. It looks like Kent State has uh, just one ball. So it will really be on uh, Zwick to uh, try to reset the shot clock with regularity and not get a balls over call here. Alex Heichelbeck, you're doing an outstanding job with this camera work. Following Zwick around the court. Just want to say uh, thank you, good sir. My pleasure. Five minutes and 45 seconds left in this first half. Seems like at some point they will be able to finish off this final Maryland player and take a 2-0 lead. And there we go. With 5.31 left in the first half, Kent State goes up 2-0. We'll be back with